A second order Butterworth filter with capacitor multiplier is implemented in this circuit utilizing two ideal op amps and one BJT, in which beta is much, much larger than one. So what is it exactly happening? This portion of the circuit, I'm going to prove that acts effectively as just a capacitor, a scalar, or multiplier. What it does is it takes the value of C and it will multiply it by this K of this potentiometer or variable resistor. Let's prove it. If I can show it, then what happens is the rest of the circuit, which I'm going to just, uh, let me just uh, grab the rest of the circuit. So this portion here, if I can prove what I just said, this portion here will act like this. So um, effectively what I'm trying to prove is the rest of the circuit just implement a capacitor which is k times c so that's the multiplier that i'm talking about so prove it let's just show it this way so i have this uh, circuit uh, i am going to apply a test voltage vt it will result in a test current it that i have to find that it can only go this way so effectively i cap become it becomes it there is nothing that can go to the input terminal of ideal op amp because it has infinite impedance. So I'm applying the V-test and I need to find Z in, which is V-test divided by I-test. So I need to find I-test. And it's the kind of impedance observed when looking this way, which effectively I'm going to show is this much. That's the plan. Okay, so let's find IT. How do we do that? Uh, well, we are applying the V-test. So let me change the color. So we are applying a V-test and assuming that the supply voltages, the positive negative VCC properly applied to uh, the two op amps. So op amp number one and two, you apply properly the supply voltages for these op amps so that they are properly biased in linear region of operation, not saturated. And let's make the assumption that the proper selection of components, negative feedbacks are in the, in the op amps are more powerful than the positive feedback. If that is the case, then circuit is a stable. We can assume that virtual short is valid for both op amp. When virtual short is valid, it means that the positive input terminal and negative input terminal of the op amps, they have the same voltage. So if we apply VT, if we apply VT at positive, we should apply VT at negative terminal as well. That VT appears here, which means it is at positive at op amp number two. So you should get VT at the negative terminal of op amp as well. That VT appears across resistor R will cause a current I that is equal to VT over R that is flowing through this resistor and then continues to flow to KR like this. So that is a VT over R. Okay, that current flowing through KR, which is K times R, because it already caused VT across R, it obviously causes or generates KR, KVT voltage drop across KR because it has K times resistor. Now, this KR is uh, in parallel with this R because on one side they both have VT, on the other side, on the other side they have a common node. So this KVT should be a, a, also here, KVT. That result in a new current I2 that is flowing through this resistor R. And that new current, if I show in different color, that new current is flowing like this and has to continue flowing like this, cannot go through the input terminal of ideal op amp because infinite impedance wouldn't allow it. So that current I2 flows like that. And I can compute the value of current I2. It is simply, um, if I need to, it is simply uh, KVT divided by R. Now, since uh, we have the same resistor R and same current flowing through them, we should have the same voltage drop value-wise across them. But if the direction is like this, the direction will be here as well. So KVT appears with that direction. Now, this resistor R is in parallel with this cap because on one side, both of them CVT, both of them CVT. On the other side, they have a common node. So as a result, this plus minus KVT appears as the voltage of the cap. So what I can say is, let's deal with Zin. 
what I can say is Zn is equal to V test divided by I test, which is V test that is a known voltage we apply. I test is I cap. So I can say is V test over V cap divided by Z cap, impedance of cap, is V test divided by VC is KVT. So KVT divided by Z cap, which is 1 over CS. So we get simply 1 over KCS, exactly as we, as, as I said, we're going to get. So for the Z input, it's as if we have a total cap that is like KC, and therefore the equivalent circuit becomes this circuit. And this circuit is implementing a second order Butterworth filter, given that the BJT, that is, or bipolar transistor that we have, has a very large beta. By the very large beta, you can see that it is in the form of a uh, follower. So when the circuit is in the, in the form of a voltage follower, the emitter voltage V out, of course, AC wise is the same as base voltage. So V out appears here, AC wise, assuming transistor is in linear region of operation which it is, given the kind of a VCC and negative VCC that is applied. Now, since beta is pretty large, very large, and we know that the I base is one over uh, beta of I collector or I emitter roughly, so we can make the assumption that given beta is very large, I base is nearly zero. So I'm going to make the assumption that the current of the base of transistor is nearly or practically zero. Therefore, as if this connection current-wise is not there. But the voltage V out is there. And if I note, if I say this node is um, X, and therefore voltage is Vx, uh, V a simple voltage divider between Kc and R, I can relate Vx and V out. So let's do that. Uh, I know voltage divider, so I'm going to write voltage divider resulting V out is simply a voltage division 1 over KCS, that's the impedance of KC cap, divided by series of R and KCS, 1 over KCS, times Vx. And as a result, uh, I can just say, uh, this is equal to, of course, uh, 1 over 1 plus KRCS times Vx. So, if we write it the other way, Vx is simply 1 plus KRCS times V out. Let's keep this as equation number one. Okay, let's focus on, let's focus now on, um, on this node and write a KCL here. By KCL, I mean the current that is coming to the node should be equal to the current that is going out and this current. So one current coming in two currents going out. So KCL at, um, let's put it this way, KCL at node X would say Vn minus Vx divided by R, which is input current, equal to the two outgoing current, which is Vx minus V out, or we can put it this way. One is uh, C Vx over a series of R and KCS, so it's simply Vx over R plus uh, 1 over KCS. And the other one is Vx minus V out over, uh, so Vx minus V out over 1 over CS. Okay, so if we uh, just simplify things, it looks like this way. V in is equal to Vx times uh, moving this negative Vx over R to the other side and multiply everything by R, you get 1, and then we get plus KRCS over 1 plus KRCS. And then we get uh, RCS. And finally, we have minus RCS V out. So uh, minus RCS V out. Okay, so let's do uh, now this equation number two. So this is equation number two. I'm going to use combination of one and two and substitute for Vx using one in equation two. So Vn equal to uh, 
um, Vx is 1 plus Krcs, and then we get the rest of it, right? So times the rest of it. So let's multiply. So I get 1 plus Krcs, so that's because of 1, and then we get plus Krcs, because we have already a denominator over there, and uh, we get Rcs times 1 plus Krcs, and finally we get minus Rcs times V out. Okay, so if I just uh, now simplify, this one cancel out with 1 times Rcs, and these two guys become 2 Krcs. So uh, if I go back to, uh, let's say, black color, then I get Vn is equal to 1 plus, uh, or let, let's put it this way, h of s, which is v out over vn in s domain, is 1 over 1 plus 2 times krcs, and then plus k r square c square s square. Very nice. So we got to this transfer function, voltage transfer function for this circuit that shows that we have a second order polynomial in denominator and it can implement a second order filter. Now, uh, of course, if we want to find uh, this as a butterboard filter, we need to set k properly. So let's set k equal to 0.5. So if k is set equal to 0.5, then our h of s becomes, so maybe I write it here, um, so if I set, uh, or maybe I keep that for some uh, maybe body plot, so if I set h of s k equal to 0.5, then h of s becomes 1 over 1 plus krcs, um, and then plus, uh, sorry, k removes with 2, so become rcs, and then becomes 0.5 R square, C square, S square. Um, actually, you know, I think because uh, I might need the, let me see if I can just uh, put everything here. So set S equal to J omega. That's uh, for sinusoidal steady state analysis, finding the frequency response. We need to do that. So set S equal to J omega. As a result, absolute value of, uh, let's say, as a result, um, H of omega becomes 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 minus 0.5 r square c square so um, r square c square omega square that's a real part of denominator of course uh, plus j r c omega and if you're interested in finding the uh, magnitude response of this thing, so naturally you, you get something like this. So uh, the magnitude response becomes absolute value of h omega squared is equal to 1 over 1 um, minus r2 c2 omega uh, squared and then plus 0.25 R4C4 omega 4 and then plus R squared C squared omega squared which cancel out this portion and therefore the magnitude response uh, the, the magnitude response in frequency domain or frequency magnitude response becomes 1 plus um, 0.25 r to the power 4, c to the power 4, omega to the power 4, which is exactly what you expect from a, a second-order Butterworth filter, which is supposed to have this sort of a frequency response, magnitude response of frequency domain, which you can map it. If it's supposed to be mapped to something like this, then obviously it means your, let me put it this way, it means from these two things that your omega zero for the Butterworth filter by matching what you're seeing here should be equal to um, 
just trying to make sure I'm not missing something, should be equal to, I think you will end up with this situation. So you will end up omega uh, not equal to one over, um, so all I'm trying to say is you have this situation. You have 1 over uh, 0.25 rad 4 RC. And of course, 0.25 rad 4 is nothing but um, you have 1 over 4 rad 4, which means 1 over 2 rad, uh, rad 2. So you would get this rad 0.5 RC. So anyways, uh, all I'm trying to say is you find the omega naught for your Butterworth filter and effectively the magnitude response of your Butterworth filter looks like this. So if this is body plot, H omega uh, absolute value 20 log 10, then of course what happens is you have an omega zero. So uh, at omega zero that I just indicated. So at omega zero, theoretically is um, flat roughly and then when you hit this point you will start having the magnitude in db scale dropping uh, with a speed of 40 db per, per decade so it is this thing is 40 d, negative 40 db per decade for the magnitude basically every 10 times the frequency is increasing your magnitude is dropping by 40 db so um, that is the impact of, uh, of course, the expected impact of uh, the second order Butterworth filter. I hope that this example is helpful in terms of showing how uh, a second order Butterworth filter and in general, a good filter can be implemented uh, with a capacitor multiplier.